What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Moda J and we are locked in. This is day five of the eight day recap of Netflix's series, The Madness. Now, Munchi, he didn't turn himself in. It's looking bad for him. We might not get bail. We might be going down for first degree N word. Oh man, they didn't found all this evidence on him, but he does have a lawyer and she told him not to talk. So before we jump into this and break down episode five, if you like this kind of content, this madness series is a must watch, in my opinion, on Netflix, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and we're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you, but enough talking for me. Let's jump into it. This is episode five, the madness on Netflix. The beginning of the episode, we see Lori go over to Stu's house and he brings her in. And we also see Moonsee getting escorted out of the police station and they take the handcuffs off of him. We just heard all this damning evidence in episode four and we're wondering what exactly is going on here. And you can tell that this cop is a little upset that he has to release him. While Lori is over here talking to Stu, we know that there's a connection between Stu and Mark. Mark was getting paid by Stu. Now he's telling her he needs to get rid of any evidence there is linking the two together because he doesn't want this blowback to fall on him being that the Airbnb that Mark was in was his. He's also been paying him and we know that he's brother 14. So this is real bad if the media gets a hold of this, but also he's donating money to her quote unquote donating. He's actually giving her money to survive $5,000 up front. But then he said we can make increments of money later on. This is for her to help him disconnect himself from Mark. And of course, at this point, you need some money. So you got to take it. He was actually released from jail into the custody of Franco, Agent Franco, the FBI agent. Now, remember, he hasn't been charged with anything. So the cover story is he's out on bail, if anyone is to ask. But what he brings Muncie in here for is saying that he's going to put a wire on him to get Stu to confess. And if we can get Stu to confess to working with Mark and paying Mark and also paying other individuals out of that account, then this will free up everybody. Agent Franco, he'll have his case solved. You'll be able to go free. Now, this is the scary thing. They only have 48 hours to actually make this work. And we don't know what Agent Franco is really here for. We don't know if he's good and he's trying to help out or he's just trying to make his case and then he might throw Muncie up under the bus after. Lori gets the money from Stu. Now she's headed over to Mark's furniture place. Now the guy, Roger, that works there, he's like, hey, how are you going, Mrs. Stu? And she's like, that's not my name. She goes in there, she's looking for some personal evidence. When I say evidence, it's a hard drive that has all the information. But it turns out before Mark passed, he put the co-owner, Mr. Woods, Bobby Woods, in charge of this. So he already cleared out the safe. This has her upset because there's a hard drive and it has any information that's connecting Mark to Stu. This would actually work for her and to get this money from Stu. And it would also help with her and Muncie trying to figure out who's coming after them because this is a little more evident. Now it's time for them to get this wire together so he can go and talk to Stu Magnuson. Stu Magnuson has been paying people off. He's a billionaire. He's kind of confused on how all of this is tied over to him. But here we are. Now they're in the back of this restaurant. They're supposed to be discreet. <laughs> Muncie is trying Agent Franco's food because he's a weirdo. He eats glizzies just on straight mayo in a bun. I say, like, but that's neither here or there. We need to get this wire together so we can get Stu to confess and we could just end this madness. Lori's trying to get this hard drive back. So in order to get this, she has to go over to the forge. Now the lady she had watching her kids after she left, she gave her in and what she's doing is faking it. Like I'm trying to make a memorial for Mark and for the kids, but this hard drive that Mr. Woods took, I definitely need that back because well, there's family photos on there. So now she has to act like she wants to get back into the forge with brother 14 being unalive and she's the first lady. This is going to be tough, but it's worth the risk. Now, when they get down here, everyone is turned on her because while she was married to Mark, she actually left. She divorced them. She got the kids, the house, and she left this group alone. So what they're looking at her as is now nah, you're pretty much a traitor. So they need to pat her down, make sure she's not wearing any wire like any outsider would be treated. They got to pat her down, make sure we're all good to go. And everyone's looking around, but the ladies, they don't want to do it. 
So the new head guy, he steps up and he makes sure it happens. It's up to Lori to explain what she's been doing with Muncie. Now she's saying, listen, he's not the one to do it. Why would we set him up? This is bigger than him. Mark was working with somebody that was trying to set him up to take down the Ford. Brother 14 was here for all of us and Muncie, that's a low level. Why would they send someone like that to set us up? Someone from CNN. So she's trying to downplay Muncie and let everyone else know that there's a bigger fish that they need to fry. Now we're thinking that it might be Stu, which she's talking about because Stu is trying to get, <laughs> get information from her to delete evidence. So right now it's going according to plan and she's one step closer to getting this hard drive. Muncie meets up in the alley where he's supposed to connect with Stu the billionaire. The only thing is Stu doesn't show up and a random number calls him. Now this number that calls him is actually a security guard that works for Stu the billionaire. And he's saying, we're not meeting in that alley. You have FBI agents following you. He's driving a Ford Taurus. So if you want to meet with Stu and make this happen, you need to dish that phone, get rid of your wire and let's go now. So he hears this and he goes ahead and dumps the phone in the trash can. Now, Agent Franco and his assistant, they come looking for him, but he went and hopped into the back of a black Escalade because Stu only rides in the best. Once he hops in the vehicle with the security guard, they start driving off and he's like, oh yeah, we'll meet up with Stu. This is gonna work out. I can't believe you had FBI agents. But out of nowhere, he feels a jab in his left thigh. Ah! He's like, man, what the hell? Well, he just put him to sleep. He had some kind of syringe with some kind of sleeping, <laughs> sleeping concoction that knocked him out because he doesn't want him to know exactly where they're going or where he's taking them. Stu is always thinking ahead, but that's what billionaires do. You think they're just riding around with regular security? Nah, they got the best. Lori does exactly what she needs to do to get the good graces of the forest to come back in here. Now the guy that gave her her in, he has the drive. Now. This is where things get a little weird. He says, here goes your hard drive. She says, thank you, all of our memories are on here. He says, but in order for you to get this, I need to do something. You need to give me something. And we're thinking, oh Lord, if she has to do all of this for this hard drive, oh my goodness, don't do it. But he just has her sit on the bed and he pulls a comb out and says, let me know if I'm hurting you. And he combs her hair and says, my sister used to let me do this when we were little. I'm like, what? That's all you wanted to do was comb her hair for a hard drive? Well, at least she got it. While Lori's going through this hard drive, she finds audio recordings of Mark and Stu on the phone with each other, talking about giving each other money, how the, the line needs to be drawn. They're not taking out Americans, but with your money and my help, we can make things happen. But then there's also some photos of the family. But then there's one photo by itself by a woman whose name is Julia. Now this lady, Julia, there was an FBI agent who before Mark came up missing, came to talk to Lori. Now she's putting two and two together. She's like, wait, this lady that's on this hard drive was a, a FBI agent, but she really isn't an FBI agent. And now she's on this hard drive. So this is connecting the dot. Munchie, he's really gonna need this information. Over at Stu's house, Muncie's finally waking up. Now his security, he's sitting there. He's like, he's good to go, sir. You want to talk to him? Now, remember, he's been asleep since he got in that Escalade. He doesn't know where he is at. He's just waking up a little bit groggy. He's like, huh, what's going on? And Stu, and guess who else sits down? Julia. Now, when they sit down, they get straight to business. Now, Julia is representing Stu. Muncie, he wakes up, he's like, listen, all right, y'all want all this information from me about Mark and who could be potentially setting me up. What do I get back? And they're like, well, we'll give you the best PR. We'll give you a lawyer and you'll be good to go. But Muncie's saying that ain't good enough. What I want is you guys to stop trying to frame me. And Stu is saying, listen, I don't know what you're talking about with this framing, but I didn't frame you. Now this has Muncie saying, wait a minute. So you might be getting screwed around then, Stu, if you don't believe that you did this. He's like, yeah, we gave Mark some money, but everybody else, we had nothing to do with that. So now we're looking at Julia and Stu and Julia go off to talk in the back. And you hear Stu say, we're business people. We're not killers. I wouldn't set you up. Yeah, I gave Mark some money for some influence, 
to the revision, you know, we can get some influence. He goes and talks to some of the people on the board. He can change their minds, sway they, you know, saying sway they thoughts. But we not setting anyone up. And that's when Muncie is saying, well, if you're not setting me up, then that means you're getting played by Julia. And as they're in the back, they're talking, they come back up front. We see Julia's true colors. Now, the guy we've been looking for the whole time, Don, well, guess what? While Muncie and Stu are talking, he ends up coming in with Julia. Muncie sees him. He says, that that's him. He pulls his gun out. He shoots Stu and he shoots a security guard. So right now, it's all bad. Stu was getting played. The whole time we thought Stu Magnuson was a bad guy, yeah, he was giving some money to some unsavory characters, but he wasn't the bad guy. It was Julia the whole time, the fake FBI agent. Muncie and the hitmen, they get the fight and they going at it. Julia's in the other room trying to figure out what she needs to do next because Stu is on the live, security is on the live, and then we see Muncie start putting him in the headlock. He's choking him out, putting him to sleep. Julia comes with a gun. He's like, listen, just let me go. You'll never hear from me again. Julia's not letting anyone go. Julia fires off shots. Bow, bow, bow. She kills Don. And well, from here, we see Muncie. He runs out the back. And <laughs> what comes next is some wild stuff. But when you're running for your life, he runs and jumps off this ledge out into the water. Now, we don't even know where we're at. I haven't seen anything that looks like this in America. But he jumps off of this. That's because Julia is firing off them rounds. And let me tell you something. A mind full of scared is better than a mind full of lead. He jumps off into this water. He didn't even know what was on the other side of it. He just didn't want to get shot. And Julia, she ain't playing around. Now, you know she's going to be after his family. All right, there you go. Episode five. Man, what would you have done in that situation? Are you going to go and look over there before you jump? Or are you just running for your life and jumping and you'll figure it out when you're in the air? Let me know what you think because, man... I probably would have had to try to get his gun and shoot back at Julia or something because this is some wild stuff. But let me know what you think. Make sure you tune in tomorrow <laughs> for episode six. I'm Moda J. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Eight days, eight recaps. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.